So, what's a stereotypical English introduction? Good day, mate. No, that's Australian. No, <laughs> this joke's going nowhere, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between? Hello again, or for the very first time. I'm some guy, and welcome to Overanalyze Adventures, the show where I riff over adventure games for my own amusement, and for hopefully yours too. And the game I have for you today, why, it's a brand spanking new English made, well, at least Northern Ireland, there's some controversy about that thing, made game. It's actually pretty damn good. Cue the musical intro. I've got to admit this was um, an improper try of a joke But it rhymed in talking humour You've got to know I'm just another German bloke Who loves afternoon tea And Bob Capley and Mr Bean Who loves to buy miniature phone booths And cute little snow globes raining snow on a cute little queen Mostly you're jolly Times you frustrated England, then rest assured. I also think penalty shootouts are highly overrated. The Yanna's got Mozart, Japan, they had in Paris, Canada, the Catholics got the Pope, England's got the Beatles, and even more so. Scott Steve Harris As you can tell, the game I'm about to play for your amusement is Her Majesty's Spiffing. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Majesty's is a difficult word to pronounce. But anywho, before I get into the game proper, I feel like it's worth taking a gander at this game's menus. My god. Somebody watch Star Trek. But anyway, for those of you that can't tell, this is a hot, fresh, and brand spanking new Northern Ireland made adventure game made using Unity. I know, that's almost like a slur on the YouTubes. This game was a Kickstarter success story, thanks to the likes of people like, well, me. I backed it because, well, I like English adventure games. Revolution Software is one of my favorite developers ever. So... Through osmosis of English adventure gaming, I back this game, and I cannot say I regret it. Not one damn bit, as you're about to witness as I play this game for you and pause in while you've seen it. Oh dear me, there's no voice acting for this part of the game. But anywho, it pretty much summarizes a little intro video that I played music over. But don't worry, all you missed out on was hearing, like, the National Anthem of Britain play over while the Queen walked. I thought a guy was more appropriate. But nevertheless, here's the game's plot. The Queen's like, wow, England screw, Brexit and all that. I'm going to take control now, and we're going to space. And yeah, that's exactly where we're picking up our story now. Credit where credit is due. This game actually has some pretty nice looking graphics. So this is our spaceship. The HMS English Stereotypes. Here we are, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Space, the final frontier. I am Captain Frank Lee English, and these are the voyages of the starship HMSS Imperialize. Our mission? to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Straight to the Star Trek parodies. Yeah, that's not a well-worn path or anything. Rousing stuff, Captain English, sir. <laughs> you really think so? I was afraid it would sound a little bit cliched. Uh, the last thing I'd want would be for anyone listening to think that was going to be representative of the quality of all our dialogue throughout this entire voyage. Oh, I believe I may have spoken too soon, you sassy little game. Perhaps it's best not to heighten expectations too early on, Boyo. Yes, Jones. A healthy dose of self-deprecation should neutralize the mildly xenophobic nature of the mission we've been tasked with by Her Majesty, Queen of Great Britain and of the Commonwealth Realms. 
All right, folks, yeah, the brain in this game is really good. This is hands down one of the funniest games that I've played since the glory days of LucasArts. Or LucasFilms, if I want to show my age. Well, I'm past. Who's fatigue? Yeah, even this little tutorial thing. My god. You stay here at the controls, Jones, while I navigate to the ship's kitchen facilities to acquire a refreshing beverage. The walk will give me the chance to familiarize myself with the intuitive navigation system. Can you grab us a cup too? I feel compelled to say an authoritative yet non-committal perhaps in this circumstance, Jones. It would be an appropriate reason to practice using the inventory system, yet I fear that such a magnanimous gesture may erode the command hierarchy aboard this vessel. Oh, game, you're just pretty damn funny. But anyway, we do do what the man says. We go ahead and make a cup of tea, because we're English, goddammit. But first things first, we gotta pick up some inane objects in this cockpit that has a lot of references to other games. I would do well to study these closely in case of an emergency. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Because this adventure game, like a lot of other adventure games, allows you to examine items in your inventory and manipulate it in some little 3D manipulation other world. And of course, this is essential for solving puzzles. In fact, this is one of the game's core puzzle mechanics. You're gonna find a lot of important items by examining an item. Why, the humble paperclip, a staple of any adventure gamer's inventory. So now that we're armed with a paperclip, we can now carry on making that cup of tea in this rather nice but admittedly small world that we're navigating in. Yeah, Her Majesty is not a particularly huge game. This ship would best familiarize herself with it because the majority of our time is going to be spent wandering these halls and the ten odd rooms contained within it. Now, to find the kitchen. If memory serves me correct, it's just down this corridor. Beyond the fourth wall. Oh, come on, game. That's a little bit of a lame joke. Oh, well, uh, he was being literal there. Well, literal jokes aside, let's carry on with making that cup of tea. It really takes the misery out of making tea. Oh, I wouldn't know. But yeah, armed with our tea, we can now go back to our co-pilot buddy and, well, give him the tea. It's a pretty straightforward tutorial puzzle. Awfully sorry for the delay. Never mind, Boyo. How did you manage to carry it in there without spilling any? I've just been very careful. Ever since that whole Deepwater Horizon incident. I don't really have anywhere to set this. You won't take over the controls from it until I finish. Wouldn't want to spill anything over these expensive electronics. Ha! Huh, but of course! Why, if such a thing were to happen, we'd have a real puzzle on our hands! Oh no, game. You winked and everything. You know what's about to happen. Right self mode disabled. Uh, Primary uh, starboard uh, opening oh, rear oh, 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 Keep oh, it steady. Uh, no. Daisy, Daisy, give me your hands. Holy cow! I know, it looks like we're doing calisthenics while a cow floats in space. It's all oh, pretty damn remarkable. And in the first person, we're playing Mist now, or at least briefly. Ah! Look what you've done! I told you to keep it steady! Good heavens! What a waste of perfectly good tea! I think we should be more concerned about the irreparable damage done to the ship's steering system. Well, I wonder what we're about to do now. Of course, it lacks the precision of a mouse and keyboard. That's right, we're about to fly this puppy with an Xbox controller. I wonder if they're going to change that for the PS4 release. Here, plug this in. See if it works. Uh, that isn't going to be much use without batteries, boyo. What? Aren't they included? And remove a superfluous hurdle present simply to prolong a problem you've long since figured out? Huh, when is that ever the case? Honestly, I don't even think my commentary is necessary for most of this game. Why am I even here? No joy, boyo. What? Is it supposed to be plug and play? No, boyo. You'll have to install the drivers first. Well, can't you just download them in here? The Wi-Fi can't reach this part of the ship. Try getting online in one of the other rooms. See if you can download the drivers onto something and bring it here. 
I suppose you'll just be sitting here in the meantime. That's how the genre works, Beth. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, well, it's probably a tedious puzzle to fix it. Man, if this game was a... Well, enough said. We gotta go download some drivers. And this puzzle, well, if you're not familiar with floppies, it may be a bit trickier than you realize. Hmm, very odd. It won't let me save onto the disc. Don't copy! Don't copy that floppy! Oh, it's such an elegant puzzle. And yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> uh, it's a shame that that computer's not an Amigo or a Commodore or an Amstrad. Something uniquely British. Fantastic! Now to quickly copy this driver. Sorry, oh, gosh, is that the time? It'll be starting to get dark outside. Best check up on Alec and see if he's dried off. Oh, the floppy disk, what a glamorous medium. I wonder if there's ever going to be a floppy disk revival, like what we're seeing with vinyl. Although you can only put one MP3 on a floppy, if you're lucky. Sub Lieutenant Jones. Alec, wake up. Wake up, Alec. Oh, this is useless. He'll be out for hours unless I can think of another way to wake him up. Well, when noise doesn't work, you can always try liquid. <coughs> What's going on? What are you playing at, boyo? I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. It felt like someone else was in control of my inhibitions. Just give me the driver so we can GTFO. GTFO? Get things functioning and online. You need to swat up in your acronyms, FFS. For future scenarios. Speaking of the future... Alright, boyo. Well, the bad news is that before this driver will work, one of us is going to have to descend into the dark depths of the ship to perform the emergency systems reset procedure. You mean turn everything off and on again? Yes. But the good news is, it's a one-person job, so only one of us will have to do it. Yeah, presumably I'll be the one doing the legwork, as usual. Well, if you want, we could make it seem like you had a choice in the matter. Here, we'll flip for it. Heads or tails? Tails never fails. It's heads. Blast! I can't help but feel that somehow that was always going to happen. What fates impose that men must needs abide, it boots not to resist both wind and tide. Gosh! The writing on this voyage just stepped up a level. Well, you heard, Mr. English. We got better writing and more puzzling to do. Like, lube ourselves up and go down a hole. Triple action. Removes grease, fights odors, preserves one's dignity while attempting to squeeze through a narrow opening. The holy trinity of cleaning products. If you want a job done around here, you've got to do it yourself. Whilst that did smell like a spring breeze, it did chafe a turd. I'd better go carb-free when we go back to old Blighty. Eh? Hmm, well... We better do some more adventuring before we do that, buddy. Ah! Voila! That should significantly reduce the risk of death by electrocution. Always a comforting reassurance. This should do the trick. Well, damn, this game certainly became a horror game. Quite the genre twister. I'm actually just kidding. Or maybe I'm not. Ooh, actually it's December, so why am I trying to scare you? Let's check back with Alan and see if that's sort of everything. Oh, and here it's starting to get me the creeps. So we got a haunted ship, or maybe it's just meant to be a reference to the ring, because when we get back to the cockpit, there's a reference to another popular film. Ah, I see Allard's activated the autopilot and skived off. With that reference out of the way, let's go ahead and find our buddy now. Sub-Lieutenant Jones! 
Aye, boyo. What is it you're tinkering with there, Jones? That isn't... That isn't our reconnaissance rover you're disassembling, is it? Well, but, funny story. While you were downstairs attending to that very complicated, laborious task, flicking that switch on and off, I've been running a variety of pre-mission calibration tests on the Beagle 2-2. I presume that's why the floor's covered with bits of toy Hot Wheels track. Firstly, the fact that this modular vehicular pathway simulation system happens to be mass-produced and branded as a children's toy is irrelevant. And secondly, yes. Oh, come on, folks. We all know where this is going. It's an adventure game. Sounds like I'm going to be required to go on some kind of scavenger hunt. What do you need? To get the rover going again? For the time being, that's all I feel I'm obligated to offer, yes. I think the rigorous nature of the, uh, test may have burned out the main motor. I see. So, I'll have to find something to create some sort of electromagnet that'll revolve when a current is passed through it. I'll have to fashion a pulley system of sorts to drive power to the wheels. Something with a taut elastic band should do the trick, like an alluring undergarment. Now, if I was to remove the elastic... God damn it, I want to have a beer with Mr. English. Alternatively, but you could just always grab me a spare. We've got a cupboard full of them. Oh, well, uh, that sounds a lot easier than what Mr. English had planned. Right. I'll have this open in a jiffy. Aha! That's what I'm after! Well, once is a coincidence, twice is a trend, and I guess we have a ghost on this ship now. But oh well, let's play around with that little beagle thing. For the last time, the left stick moves it forward and back. The right stick turns it left and right. Yeah, you get to control things in this game. I know, it's an adventure game that dares to have some gameplay. Although it's very brief. You've reached your destination. Sub Lieutenant Jones, we've arrived! The new, new world! Quickly, break open a container of property of ER2 flags and prepare a landing party! As much as I'd love to jump onto the surface and soak up the radioactive atmosphere of this uncharted, most likely fatally hazardous planet, I think it may be an idea to send the Beagle 2-2 down first, just to get a feel for the place. I've considered your suggestion, Sub-Lieutenant Jones, and have made the executive decision to send the Beagle 2-2 down for a quick recce, prior to making our own triumphant descent. The extra time will allow us to properly consider which 19th century member of the aristocracy to name this place after. All right, let's have some fun with a rover. I'm kind of bad at it. Last! The motor was a dud! Probably made by a brummy or someone else from the north. I wouldn't say Birmingham's in the north. Anyone above Enfield's north as far as I'm concerned, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Well, we'll have to go down and salvage the rover. It'll look very embarrassing if we lose another one of these. Set us down! Oh, so what kind of fun-filled adventures are we gonna have on this mysterious planet? That's not named and, yeah, where the hell are we? Are we still in the solar system? Have the English achieved faster than light travel? I don't know. All these questions and more probably won't be answered in the next and final installment of the over-analysis of Her Majesty Spiffing. A pretty good game. Alright guys, hopefully I'll see you next time. Have a good day.